In this video, we're going to talk about immunization. Uh, it falls under the concept of asset liability management. In the previous video, learning video, we talked about ex uh, exact matching or dedication. That was one way to uh, manage your assets and liabilities, and this is a second way, immunization. So let me get started with the setup here. Uh, remember you have assets and liabilities, so uh, you have a present value function of the assets and a present value function of the liabilities, and I want to think of both of those present values as uh, functions of the interest rate. Then I want to define the net present value function. It's defined to be the present value of the assets minus the present value of the liabilities. Okay, so now let's think about that for just a second. Uh, you know, magnitude-wise, what would you want to be true about this particular net present value function? Well, you're taking the present value of the assets and you're subtracting the present value of the liabilities. So I hope your intuition tells you that you want that to be positive. And if that's positive, you're say, you're, you say that you're in the black. If that's positive, you have more assets than you have liabilities. That's a good thing. Uh, on the opposite end of that, if, you have, uh, if the present value of the assets is less than the present value of the liabilities, you have a negative net present value, you say you're in the red. You don't want to be in the red. You want to be in the black in, in this situation. Okay, so now let's look at the idea behind immunization. Uh, so we give a, uh, given a specific interest rate, I equal I sub zero, and instead of I sub zero, I'm going to say I naught. If possible, which immunization is not always possible, but if it's possible, you want to have assets and liabilities arranged so that the graph of this net present value function has a minimum of zero located at I equal I naught. So your uh, immunization occurs at a certain interest rate. In this case, I've denoted that interest rate by I naught. Now, let's peel away at this idea and pluck out some, some mathematics from it. The first thing is that it has a minimum of zero. I want to focus on the zero. So the zero means that the, uh, since the minimum has a value of zero, it means that the value of the net present value function at I naught is going to be zero. Okay, so let's, let's look at the conditions then required for immunization, the first one I just talked about. The value of the net present value function has got to be zero when you plug in an I naught into the net present value function because that's the minimum value, it's a minimum of zero. Now let's focus on that word minimum. So from, uh, from calculus, you know that minimums, um, you know, minimums occur at critical points of the function and the critical values of the function are, are values where the derivative is equal to zero. So the second condition is that the derivative of the present value function um, at I naught uh, is got to be equal to zero. I naught is a critical value for the uh, net present value function. Okay, so now just those two conditions alone don't mean that you have a minimum. Remember, so you, you know now that you have a critical value, but from calculus, uh, of course, you, you, you'll remember that uh, just because you have a critical value, it could be a minimum, it could be a maximum, or it might even be an inflection point. Uh, there might be an inflection point at, at I naught. And so in order to ensure that you have a minimum, you want to use the second derivative test. You want the graph to be concave up, and concave up means that you want the second derivative to be positive. So at, at I naught, you want the second derivative uh, uh, to be greater than zero. So those are the conditions required uh, for immunization. Okay, so now let's go, uh, let's dig a little deeper into these conditions. Uh, the first condition there that, um, that I've hi got highlighted in red. Well, the net present value function is, is, uh, is defined to be the present value of the assets minus the present value of the liabilities. And so in order for that to be zero, we're just saying that the present value of the assets has to be equal to the present value of the liabilities at the interest rate I naught. Okay, so now let's look at the second condition. The second condition uh, it talks about the derivative of the net present value function. And uh, the, the uh, net present value function is this difference of, of two other functions, but the derivative is technically, I guess you, you would say it's a linear operator, which means you can take a term by term derivative. So the derivative of the net present value function is the derivative of the assets minus the derivative of the liabilities. And for that to be equal to zero by condition two, it, you're, it implies that the derivative of the assets uh, of, the, of the present value of the asset as a function of the interest rate has to be equal to the derivative of the uh, present value of the liabilities at the interest rate I naught. 
And then likewise, in a very similar way, the third condition it talks about the second derivative, but again, the second derivative, you take the derivative of the first derivative. So the second derivative is uh, of the net present value function is the second derivative of the present value function of the assets. And uh, we require then that the, uh, uh, the second derivative of the present value of the assets is greater than the second derivative as of the present value of the liabilities at I naught as a function of the interest rate and when we plug in I naught. Okay, now let's take it another step further. Let's look at uh, what I've highlighted in red here. And uh, what I want to compare this to or, 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 you know, get to is that, you know, let's think about what the definition, let's go back to the definition of a modified duration. The modified duration is the negative of the derivative of the present value function uh, divided by the present value function. And so, for instance, I could do, uh, I could take modified durations of assets by using uh, the negative of the ratio of the two items that are in that I have highlighted in red there and then I could take the modified duration of the liabilities by taking the negative of the two values that are located here but you know by by all these values being equal to you know corresponding values being equal to each other uh, what that implies is that when you take conditions one and condition two together you end up with the fact that the modified duration of the assets would have to be equal to the modified duration of the liabilities at the interest rate I naught. And of course, there's a, the relationship between modified duration and Macaulay duration. Uh, so if the modified durations uh, are equal, then the Macaulay durations would be equal also. And then now let's look at conditions one and three together, and you might see where I'm going with this. You know, I'm going to I'm going to compare this to, or, you know, I want to bring in. Uh, convexity here. So the modified convexity is defined to be the second derivative of, uh, of the present value function uh, div divided by the present value function. And so uh, I could do this for assets by taking the, uh, uh, the ratio of the two items in, in, in red there. I could take the modified convexity of the assets this way and then the modified convexity of the liabilities using uh, what I now have highlighted in red. And so you can see that conditions one and three together would imply that the uh, modified convexity of the assets would be greater than the modified convexity of the liabilities when I, again, take conditions one and three together. And the fact is, I didn't, I, I didn't show you this, but I'm just going to state, the fact is that if the modified convexity uh, of the assets is greater than the modified convexity of the liabilities, then it'll be true for Macaulay uh, convexities too. So the Macaulay convexity of the assets will be greater than the Macaulay convexity of the liabilities. Okay, so let me kind of clean up the slide a little bit and let's talk again about the conditions required for immunization at, at I equal I naught. The first condition that we said was that uh, uh, cap P uh, I said it in words, and that's what I'm trying to say and uh, I'm going to get to here. But the, uh, mathematically, we would say that the, uh, 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 the present value function of the assets is equal to the present value function of the liabilities at the interest rate I naught. Uh, so just verbally, I would just say then the present value of the assets equals the present value of the liabilities. That's it. Just the present value of the assets equals the present value of the liabilities. The second condition, I had this mathematical condition here, uh, but then I talked about how we could take this second condition, tie it, or, uh, you know, tie it with the first condition, and uh, what we find is that the duration of the assets must equal the duration of the liabilities. And so, uh, and I, I didn't mention here which duration I'm using, and the fact is it doesn't matter. You can use Macaulay durations or, or, or modified durations. You just don't want to use Macaulay duration of one, either the assets or liabilities, and modified duration of the other. You just want to be consistent. So, um, and, then, and then the third condition was, uh, was this, uh, mathematically, this condition on second derivatives. But again, taken together with the first condition, uh, this, this condition implies, uh, these conditions one and three will imply that the convexity of the assets is greater than the convexity of the liabilities. Uh, I'll highlight in red here an important fact that all of these calculations are done at the interest rate at which you're achieving immunization at the interest rate I equal I naught. Okay, uh, before I move on, I got a couple other comments that I want to make on this immunization, but I, 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 I want to um, tie it, I, I want to talk about the first asset liability um, management 
method that we had, which was the exact matching, the dedication or exact matching. And with exact matching, so my question to you is, let's think about whether exact matching is an immunization strategy. So if you have, uh, if you have uh, your, your assets and liabilities exactly matched, are you immunized? Do you have, do you have immunization here? And the, the fact is, well, let's, let's talk, let's think through it. Will the, will the present value of the assets equal the present value of the liabilities? Of course, that's gonna be true because uh, you, the amount of the assets is exactly equal to the amount of the liabilities at every time value. And so the present value of the assets will equal the present value of the liabilities. Part two, the duration of these assets will equal the duration of the liabilities if they're exactly matched. And then part three, will the convexity of the assets be greater than the convexity of the office? Absolutely not. The convexity of the assets will be equal to the convexity of the liabilities if you're exactly matched. And so the uh, so you don't have an immunization strategy with the exact matching. Now I haven't seen any. Um, I don't know if you'll. See, I haven't seen any sample questions like this. But it wouldn't surprise me if uh, a question like that showed up on the exam in some sort of true false type type format. That you know is exact matching an immunization strategy? And and the answer would be no. It's not because this condition three uh, condition three would fail. Okay, and now finally, there's one other thing that I want to talk about. It takes me a couple of minutes to get through this. The um, we talked about uh, having a minimum, but as you know from calculus class, that uh, you, there are different types of minimums, namely two types of minimums. There's a local minimum or a global minimum, and so uh, there's different words based on whether that minimum that you have with immunization is a local minimum or, or a global minimum. It, uh, Reddington immunization, if you hear the word Reddington immunization, it's implying that the minimum that you have at I naught, yet you have an immunization strategy, and that minimum at I equal I naught is a local minimum. Full immunization implies that the minimum is a global minimum. Okay, so now what's the relevance you know, uh, for that? Well, it's that, uh, I'll, I'll word it this way, Reddington immunization is a, uh, so let me, I, I actually plucked the language out from a sample question, from the SOA sample questions. Um, so Reddington immunization would be a technique to structure assets versus liabilities in a manner that would eliminate the risk of adverse effects created by small changes in the interest rate away from I equal I naught because it's a local, uh, it's implying that you have a local minimum. You can't, you can't talk about what's happening to the net present value function at, at large changes away from where it's immunized, which is at I naught. So it, it's only, it, it's only giving you a, a, a local, uh, a local minimum, and, and so you don't, you can't say what's going to happen globally. Uh, on the other hand, full immunization uh, at I equal I naught would eliminate the risk of adverse effects created by all changes in interest rates. So uh, one last comment on the, when this eliminate the risk of adverse effects uh, created by changes in interest rate. What you're saying there is, you know, when you change the interest rate, you don't want a net present value function to go from being positive to negative. That's a that's a that's an adverse effect. That's a bad effect. The net present value, you want to be positive. And so you don't want it to change from a positive to a negative. And that's what eliminating the risk of adverse effects created by changing these interest rates. You change the, in, you, you change the interest rate, you're going to change the net present value function. You don't want the net present value function to be negative. You want it to, to, to remain positive. Okay, so Reddington immunization is a strategy that protects you against small changes in interest rates uh, because it's a, uh, it's a local minimum. Full immunization protects you from all changes, all changes in interest rates because it's a global minimum. Okay, so we'll look at an example in the uh, in the next video.